This day focused on ground school and learning the different nuances of the pit special. We got up early this morning, had breakfast, and got right to work. I started out learning about the different design characteristics of the pit special. Curtis had a different outlook on airplane designs in that he wanted to focus his designs around top-notch performance of the airplane rather than compensate for the pilot skill or lack thereof. First of all, you got to understand that the S2A is the dump truck of, uh, of the pits line. It's where it started. It doesn't have anywhere near the performance of the rest of them. Controls are slower than all the rest of them. But it's hands down the best light airplane trainer in the world. And the reason for that is because the aerodynamics are absolutely, totally uncompromised. Every airplane you can think of has uh, uh, been done, designed specifically to make it easier to fly. And the Fitz isn't. The Fitz is absolutely raw. So there's no, uh, there's no offset, there's no uh, anything to take care of adverse yaw, to take care of uh, P factor, anything. Which every other airplane has got something in it. To take care of that. So because of that, the airplane really shows you what it's doing and it can also show you what you're not doing. And, and, and more important than that, it shows you what the benefits are of correcting for all those things. So essentially what the airplane is, it's a mirror and it holds itself up to your face and shows you exactly what you're doing. So the concept of flying all the airplanes is the same. The uh, big difference besides just flat pure raw horsepower uh, between an A and a uh, B or a C is, is especially the C. Now the C is different than the other two airplanes. The C is different than the A and B considerably. Uh, part of that is because it's got uh, different ailerons. It's got it's the only fence of any kind that has a uh, aerodynamically and statically balanced uh, rotor and elevator, uh, which is a big difference. The uh, elevator pressures and all the other airplanes is heavier, especially when you're inverted. The uh, uh, S2C is heavier than my airplane by quite a bit. So, but the uh, so because of that, it's got a lot more inertia. When you when you touch down to any pits, uh, it's as if they have the coefficient of uh, friction of a ball bearing on glass. They love to roll. The length of the lanyard roll is determined more than anything else by the weight of the airplane. Mm -hmm. It's just inertia. Mm -hmm. And so the so the C really wants to roll. Mm -hmm. Also the, 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 uh, the C, like I said before, like I said last night, for whatever reason is more stable directionally than any of the rest of them. And this makes no sense whatsoever. Because the uh, uh, geometry of the landing gear on all the two-place airplanes is identical. But for some reason, the C, and nobody can explain this, the factory can't explain it, is directly more stable. But because, it's, because of its weight and the stiffness of the gear on all of them, especially on the C, when it decides to turn on landing, uh, it is way more likely to pick up a wheel when it's turning and swerving than, than any of the other two. So you, but it doesn't tend to swerve as much. As long as you land straight, it's really not going to go hardly anywhere. It's not, it's not like the other airplanes. Uh, but it just takes a while to get it done. Now, also, just for the record, the other thing between the C and the between the C and all the rest of them is the monumental drag from the uh, propeller. The Hartzell claw is uh, I, I, it totally changes the character of the airplane on the approach. That's why I. Can't teach anybody to fly to land another pit in an S2C because mm -hmm. it's just so much different. Let's power off. Mm -hmm. The uh, majority of people who fly in the airplanes uh, won't close the power until they get ready to touch down or fly it into flares over the power. And that's because when you're uh, uh, high enough on the approach to make a power off approach, mm -hmm. it is coming down so steep, it is it's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. Much steeper than mine. Yeah. Than much steeper than a B. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's not going to make the corner. Mm -hmm. Well, it will. I habitually teach people land these things power off. Mm -hmm. People have a tendency to carry a little bit of power on approach because it makes it easier to control the glide slope. Mm -hmm. But the tiniest amount of power in any of the, in any of the models 
changes the L over D, changes the glide ratio by almost 200% or more. Wow. And which means if you get, this is true of all airplanes, if you get used to land in an airplane with the power and you lose the engine, mm -hmm. you got no damn idea where that airplane's going. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to fly as many power off approaches as practical. Mm -hmm. Reputation of the airplane, anytime you bring up pit special, everybody homes in on. God, it's really nasty on the runway. It's really hard on the runway. It's just, it's just, that's where all the problems are. Well, first of all, you have to understand where the uh, reputation of airplanes come from. The reputations that airplanes have do not come from the people that fly them. They come from the people around them, passing on what they've heard, what they're told. It fits is not a hard airplane to, to fly. It is a different airplane. That's a big, that's a big thing about it. It's totally different than every, everything everybody else has flown. But once you get used to the airplane even a little bit, you realize this is the way airplanes are supposed to fly. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be, well, I put in some aileron, and then it decides to turn. It's supposed to do what you want it to do, and you do it. That's what this does. Anytime you get in a new airplane, you ought to do those. Mm -hmm. Because what it shows you is how much rudder you need for a given amount of aileron input. Also, it shows you what the timing is. Timing often from airplane to airplane is quite different. In, in this airplane and in your airplane, the need for rudder is the instant you displace the aileron. I mean, the instant you do. And yours are even more so than mine because you've got symmetrical ailerons. As a matter of fact, you've got symmetrical uh, super stinker ailerons, and all I've got are rigor freeze ailerons, which are normal ailerons. But I'm going to show you where, once we get up and get level, uh, I'm going to have you look at the top left aileron. When I say look at the aileron, I'm talking about the top left aileron. That's our guide aileron. I'm going to have you look at the top left aileron. And the trailing edge of the aileron is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. It's not a quarter inch, it's about 3 sixteenths. And I'm going to have it in line, and you're going to look at it. Then I'm going to move it so it's just not in line. I haven't moved to 3 sixteenths of an inch. I've only moved it just enough where it's not in line. Then look at the skid ball. Because where the skid ball was in the middle before, now it's showing three or four degrees of yaw. Because it, it instantly generates lift. And when it generates lift, it generates adverse yaw. <laughs> and, I, and it's just, you can't, can't hardly feel the stick move. <laughs> but you can see that little bit of later on move. The airplane's exactly the same, or actually more so, because your air are more symmetrical, so they are better than more effective. Mm -hmm. So anytime with any aileron, in any direction, it's going to drive the ball off. What that shows you, the airplane has zero dead spot in the controls. Mm -hmm. Now every other airplane you have ever flown, every other civilian certified airplane you've ever flown, has a dead spot in the controls. I don't care whether it's a 172 or, or a Bonanza or whatever. They always have where you can move the, move the controls a little bit. The airman doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Part of that is is a mechanical slop in, in the linkage, but it's also the the lack of efficiency of the ailerons. That's and it's a combination of both always. And this airplane you just can't do that with. You move your hand a fraction of an inch, and it's going to move. Then when we get out to the practice area, I'm going, to, I'm going to take the airplane, I'm going to have you looking at the nose, looking at the skid ball, feeling your butt. And your butt feels like it's sitting in a V. It's got equal pressure on both sides. Mm -hmm. All right? But the second the ball goes out, you can, your butt feels like it's sliding up an up a, up a incline. You've got an increased pressure on that side. And your butt goes out the same way the ball goes out. So it's like you step on the ball, put the ball back in the center. You step on your butt, put the ball back in the center. Now, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to have you look at, the, look at the nose, look at the skid ball. From this point on, by the way, we use the skid ball to calibrate your butt. Ideally, at the end of the week, you don't need the skid ball at all. Bottom line is, the ball is the ball, mm -hmm. the skid ball is the ball, your butt is your butt, mm -hmm. get the two of them connected. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's a, and you don't have to think, oh, gee, that's more or it's less or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Keeping the ball center, making your butt an integral part of flying the airplane. Mm -hmm. 
because on these airplanes, you can you, they talk to you more than most through your butt if you're listening. And what's going to happen is that uh, now you're going home to, to fit specials. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not. My last student, for instance, was going back to a uh, an RV4, and I, and I told him when he uh, was done, done here, he'd be a totally different RV4 pilot. And uh, the morning after he went home, uh, which was, he went home Saturday, he, he texted me on, on Sunday, and his comments were, "Wow, not only did my airplane slow down a lot since I since I left, but you know what? I see it doing things I didn't see it doing before." You know, so, so he's, he's understanding because what, what what develops out of this out of this whole week more than anything else is uh, visual acuity. It's better. You see what's happening faster, and that's critical because all these air all airplanes are visual, mm -hmm. but these are, these kind of airplanes are much more visual. You got to be able to see what's going on out there, where you want to be, and this is especially true in airplanes like we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. I mean, these airplanes will turn around and kiss you on the butt if you're smooth. Because it just pays you back like crazy. After our review of the design of the pits and performance characteristics, we took significant time to learn about the different types of approaches we would be using while training at Scottsdale. Since there are so many different types of planes flying in and out of the airfield, Bud has different traffic patterns with downwind lengths that he has down to a science with his plane and three other flight schools occupying the airspace. After our second session, we went out to the airfield where I met his pits for the first time, and we started trying out different cushions that would fit me best while flying in the front seat. I was surprised to see that he had an open cockpit for his front seat, so I was excited to have that experience. After we figured out my cushion configuration, we sat down one last time to discuss landmarks at the airport that he uses when we were flying in the traffic pattern. He utilizes a lot of 360s in his flying to allow for adequate spacing with trainers and jet traffic, and he has a good relationship with the controllers at Scottsdale, so he went over his procedures in detail in case the traffic became congested. We also discussed the sight picture I would see while in the flare-out from the front seat and where to look out for the best reference points. Unfortunately, due to the congestion of the Scottsdale traffic pattern, we were not able to get our first flight completed today. However, Bud had a great plan B in mind. He happens to know some of the guys over at Dillon Precision, and so I was able to take a tour of their facility as well as some of their aircraft. After meeting up with the mechanics and pilots of the Dillon Precision Fleet, I saw one of my favorite places was right down the road to eat, so I went to In-N-Out Burger for one of their classic burgers and shakes. Overall, it was a great day full of learning and unexpected adventures, and we will do our first flight tomorrow morning. See you in the next video.